안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And today I bring you five new CSS rules, functions, and pseudo classes that you didn't know existed. My favorite one makes CSS feel a bit more like a programming language. So make sure to watch the video until the end to know which one it is. Support is an at rule. It's called at rule because you first write the at symbol and then the name of the rule. The at supports rule allows you to write conditional CSS code that will run only if the browser supports a feature or not. It is very easy to use. All we have to do is write at supports followed by the property we want to test for, followed by our conditional code. When using the at supports rule, it is better to provide fallbacks or default value. Like here where you can see how the header of our page is by default a display flex. But on browsers that support CSS Grid, the header will be a display grid. If we write our code like this, we can be sure that our website does not look broken on browsers that don't support some features. And on browsers that do, our website can look even better. We can also use the at supports rule with the not operator which negates the expression. Like here where we are showing an alert to the user if the browser does not support border radius. You could also chain multiples nots together to negate the negation if you wanted to. Apart from the not operator, we also have and and or, and we can combine them if we want to. The and operator checks if all the conditions are true. Like here where we are checking if the browser supports display flex and display grid. And if that is not true, we are showing an alert to the user. The or operator in contrast will evaluate to true if one of the conditions is true. Like here where we are checking if scroll snap type is supported with the Microsoft print prefix or not. Apart from testing for CSS properties, we can also test for the support of a selector using the selector function. Like on this code where we are using the selector function to test if the browser supports the first child selector. Add supports rule along with the selector function are supported by all major browsers today. Being able to test for properties and selectors is very useful if you combine it with the next item in our list. Nth child is a pseudo class that isn't new at all. I am sure you've heard of it. It allows you to select, for example, the fourth item on a list, the even items on a list, the odd items on a list, or all the fifth items on a list, like 5, 10, 15, 15 and 20. What is new about this pseudo class is the off selector syntax and it looks like this. On this code, out of all the children that have the link class, we are selecting the number 3, which is very different from doing something like this. What this code is doing is selecting the item number 3 that also has a class link, which is different from what we want. For example, with this HTML and CSS, the second list item will be selected since it is the item number two, and it also has the link class. But with this CSS, using the new of selector syntax, the fifth list item will be selected since out of all the items with the class link, it is the second one. You can also use comma to include other selectors as well. The nth child of selector syntax is supported on all major browsers, apart from Firefox that has a bug currently being worked on. The next item in our list is the is pseudo class function. It helps us write shorter and more compact code. Take this code for example. Here we have a title that is 18 pixels. If I wanted to change the size of the title only when it's inside of a section, on an article or a div, my code would look something like this. Now, if I wanted to change the size of the title, also when it's inside of a section, an article or a div that is inside of a section, an article or a div, my code would look something like this. That does not look good. This was the problem the is pseudo class function was created to solve. Accomplishing the same goal, but using the is pseudo class function, our code looks like this. The is pseudo class function will take a list of selectors 
selectors and select any of the elements that can be selected by any of the selectors on that list. So in the first case, it will select the H1 that is inside of a section or an article or a div. And just like on the second case, we can use the is pseudo class functions next to each other to get a title that may be inside of a section, an article or a div that in turn is inside of a section, an article or a div. If we compare the code before and after, there is no question about what's best. The is pseudo class function is supported in all major browsers. The next item in our list is my favorite, is another add rule called property. It is fairly experimental, but it supercharges CSS variables and makes them more powerful. It is part of the CSS Houdini project, which is a group of low level APIs that allow us developers to have much more direct contact with the browser's rendering engine. When we use CSS variables, we do something like this, where we first create the variable and then we use it. This is fine. But how cool would it be if we made the variables smarter by giving them default values to be able to override them and even types? To do that, we use the add property rule and name our property primary color. Then we tell the browser that the type of value that this property will hold is a color and then we give it an initial value of red. Last but not least, we can choose if this property can be inherited. If we set that to true, this property will inherit the value from its father. And if it's false, it won't. Then when it's time to use our newly declared property, we use it as a normal CSS variable. And if we want to change the color of our link when the mouse is over it, all we have to do is set the value of primary color to something else. The interesting thing happens at the end of our code. There we are setting primary color to false, which isn't a color. But what this will do, because we are using the add property rule, is to set the value of primary color back to its initial value, which in our case is red. The add property rule supports other kinds of syntax as well. It can hold percentages, URLs, transform functions, and many more. It's not a hundred percent supported, but it's getting there. And talking about support, the last item in our list is a super sweet CSS function called the image function that no. is not supported anywhere at all. No support, zero, but I wish it was. When we add an image as a background on CSS, we do something like this. This loads the whole image and we can customize its size or if it stretches, if it covers the whole page, etc. What we cannot do is crop the image. This is what the CSS image function will do one day. With the image function, it will be possible to do something like this. Here we are loading the photo of our dog and we are drawing a photo that starts on zero on the X and Y axis which is the top left corner of our image. We are making the box 100 pixels wide and 200 pixels tall. After that, the rest of the image will be cropped and only the region inside of our box will be the background image of our body. I really can't wait for this to arrive in all browsers. I hope it happens soon, but I would not get my hopes high since the specification was defined more than 12 years ago. Now it's your turn. Let me know in the comments two things. Number one, which one of all these new features is your favorite? And number two, which one, if any, did you already know? And don't forget that if you want to learn JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, among many, many others for absolutely free. All you have to do is click the link below to join any of our many free courses that you can take right now for absolutely free with me. Click the link below and I will see you there. I hope you find the video useful. Hello, hello, kamsahago, sarangahago, daome bayo. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.